Coach, is a uh, Timberwolves team has talent. They're at 500. What jumps out on tape when you see them play? Yeah, I think the, the big thing is they're improving. You know, they, they've improved defensively. I think they're, you know, they, they have some young guys that are getting better. They're, they're forming, a, you know, more of an identity as a team. So they're definitely growing as far as how formidable they are to, to play against. And, you know, they got some nice pieces, guys that can, you know, obviously Cat can do the things he can do at his size. And Edwards is an explosive athlete that can do many things on the basketball court. And D'Angelo, and you go down the line, there's plenty of talented players over there. So we have to be sharp tonight and uh, continue to build on the things we've been building on. What's your plan for Claxton as you um, work him back into the yeah. flow of things? Yeah, um, I'd like to see him get an opportunity tonight. I don't want to guarantee anything, but there's a chance he plays a little bit tonight um, and tomorrow. So we'll, we'll see the, how the opportunity presents itself. But uh, that would be positive, I think, if he can get some minutes and, and continue his uh, return to play. You just kind of touched on this, but given how long Nick's been out, I take it there'd be a restriction on him as he kind of works his way back up in a game action. Should he play? Yeah, I mean, we, you know, I think we... We're, our rotations are pretty solid right now. So it's not like he's coming back to a, to play 25 minutes a night, but we want to give him opportunities to grow and prove his fitness and um, that he's up to adapting back to the game and, and then worry about his performances uh, as we go here. But right away, we, we want to give him a chance to, to get back in the lineup and, and get some minutes. How much uh, has the start-stop nature, I guess, and obviously you weren't here for all of his career, but how, I mean, how much is the start-stop nature of his career between the shoulder and the, the knee and the COVID, how much has that played a role mm -hmm. in his conditioning issues? Or do you not see that as being kind of what the core of the problem has been? You know, there's no way it could help. Um, but I, I don't know. I couldn't answer that. Like, honestly, I, I don't know if that's the issue or not. Um, but He's been working hard. He worked hard, I think, preseason. Um, he's worked hard here lately to get back. And so that's all you can ask. We're just going to keep pushing him to be the best he can be. You know, we know he has ability and has a unique profile to our team. So um, his development is important, uh, but also I think that his ability adds something to our roster. So to see him get back there and, and to a place where he's available, then a place where he's making an impact and then continue to develop and grow, I think is, is positive for our group. Obviously, he's he's cleared to play, but uh, is his health something that's going to be the subject of ongoing monitoring or anything like that? No, um, I think that's behind him, and it's just a matter of his, like I said, the adaptation to the demands and and uh, his fitness and performances will, you know, be judged going forward. But we we believe in Nick, and we're happy that he's back and. You know, it's just a matter of him getting it going again, you know, in, in layman's terms. I hey, reference this a little bit, but he does have kind of a unique skill set just compared to the rest of the roster. How important is it to get uh, those skills kind of back in the mix? Well, that, that's the the positive. The exciting part is that he is, um, you know, an athletic, young, active big that can guard multiple positions, can protect the rim, can roll on offense and can just be disruptive with his energy length and athleticism. So that's, um, you know, a, like you said, a unique profile for our team. And so if we can get him, you know, back to where he's confident, comfortable, physically, mentally, emotionally, and then adapting to our team's play, you know, there's no reason why he can't make an impact for us. Hey coach. I mean, I know you took Blake out of the rotation. You kind of sub Paul Millsap into those minutes. But what have you seen from Paul? And is there a chance that they are kind of competing for those backup center minutes behind LaMarcus? We'll see. You know, I, I think right now we're just giving Paul an opportunity. You know, he sat patiently playing little spot minutes here and there and not playing sometimes. Uh, you know, he, he, I think he's earned an opportunity. He, you know, as an intelligent, experienced player, is pretty skilled. He's seen it all before. Um you know, trying to find a, a fit with this group takes time, but uh, you can see the way he can play make as a big and, you know, he can rebound a little bit and, you know, make shots, um, you know, get to the second side, do a bunch of things that I think help facilitate our offense. And he has the intelligence defensively and in good hands to, to make an impact there too. So, um, you know, he's earned an opportunity. I think he's played quite well. And it's just a matter of seeing if he develops with this group and uh, finds a real comfort zone. To circle back to Nick for a second, you said 
th- there's a possibility he could get some minutes tonight. How do you balance him possibly getting minutes against just forcing forcing a situation where he, he's getting playing time just for the sake of getting playing time? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, I think it's uh, I, I don't love to force, you know, like if there's a if it presents itself and and we can get him out there, then I'd be all all about all for it, but uh, all in on that. But I don't want to just force it and um, and say we're he's playing tonight regardless. You know, I think it's, it's a little early to that. It's a back to back. It's uh, his first game back. Let's see if the opportunity opportunity presents itself and is a uh, you know positive for him and for the group. Hey Steve, this question is a total departure from tonight's game, but. Uh... When I'm not doing Timberwolves games, I did work with the PPA tour over the summer. And I know you had Ben Johns fly out to La Jolla and he, he, he gave you guys and the coaching staff some lessons. I just want to know, you know, what you think of, of the sport, what you think of him and how that experience was. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a fun sport and uh, it was great to see it at the highest level. He was, he was incredible. So uh, that was, I think, a, a highlight of the coaches retreat uh, to play against the, the world number one. And uh and get a lesson, more or less. It was fun. Uh, Coach, back when Cam first cracked the rotation, you were saying that she didn't want him or the young guys to think too much mm-hmm. when they're out there on the court. Um, at this point, what do you make of what, how he's performed out there? I think he's doing great. I mean, it's uh, like I've said with Cam, I think throughout this process is that this is a big change for him. You know, he's played the game away for probably his entire career that isn't necessarily the way the NBA's played for 95% of the week, you know, um, getting to mid range jump shots off the dribble, you know, his ability to, to get to space and make shots is great. But at this level, you know, it's, you know, the value of those shots isn't as high, you know, so his willingness to adapt, to take threes, to, drive to the basket to make the extra pass to learn how to you know stick to the game plan defensively make less errors you know that willingness and that ability to 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 change essentially and to fit into this group has made me really proud of him you know that that's not easy and he's uh we know he's a talented player and you know when you have talent it can be frustrating to be like i can't do the things that i've done all, all my life but we have to i think teach him first to fit into the group and then allow him to grow and and so lately he's i think he's really taken on that challenge and I'm really proud of his effort at both ends of the floor coach uh, obviously james johnson spent a lot of time with the heat and every time I ask him about what he's taking from his time with the Heat to impart onto the guys, here he goes, hey, the culture already, culture here is already defined. Um, so I'm wondering what you get from a guy like James outside of what he brings on the floor that might, you know, say impact what you guys are able to do off the floor. You know, I mean, I, th- I think, you know, for us, we just, we appreciate having a versatile player, you know, that uh, can guard multiple positions. You know, he, he's played 13 years in the league, I believe. So he has experience, you know, he brings toughness. Um, so, I mean, I, I enjoy being around him every day. Um, I don't want to get into the weeds with what he brings off the floor because that's more for the players. That's that's their private time. But, you know, on the court, you know, I love his experience. I love his toughness, his versatility as far as being able to initiate offense, get to the basket, you know, uh, make plays um, off the dribble. Defensively, you know, he can do different things, uh, get a deflection, get a steal, get a rebound. <laughs> I said uh, there's a versatility to his game that I think fits nicely with our group. Was there, I'm sorry, was there, was there anything, I guess, on the tape or on the film that you learned about him after the fact that you didn't know before he ended up here? Or was, is he kind of like, how no, I think that's what we expected from him. You know, we've seen him play a long time now. And, um, you know, I, I, I like I said, I, I think he gives us a little life at times. Or he his burst with the dribble to create opportunities for his teammates or get to the basket. Um, and like I said, his physicality, I think it's a dimension that helps us.